run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate to say, hey, babe. 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 For the land of the free and the home of hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Look at this. Well, we're doing it. We're doing it. So, you have never had a pork chop. Never, and that's what this is here. That is what it is. Okay. I've also never had goat cheese. Just goat cheese on the plate. And you yes. have never had a, a Cinnabon. Cinnabon. Look at this. Bang. We have a mild, it's actually, it's warm. A warm Cinnabon. Okay. Which we were told by the chef. We said, hey, she said, hey, listen, stupid. You told me not to eat this up. And right. we said, we got to start the show. And the, the chef, chef said, the chef, the chef had, told us. The chef had an attitude, if I'm being honest. Now, listen. This is out of the, this is an authentic Cinnabon. It's That's just a, in tin foil because that, we put it in the, the, my, the, so the authentic the Cinnabon from Carvel on 86th Street in Brooklyn. Shout out. Shout out. Um, so I'm going to now take a bite for yeah. the first time in my life yes. of a pork chop and goat cheese. Now, let me ask you something. Yeah. Because the chef, first of all, the chef is an unbelievable phenomenal. chef. Yes. Looks phenomenal food. Yes. We think 800 calories on this whole plate, so I'm well within my reach. We're, from, from we're, my yeah, we're guessing. I wonder from what the fitness. calories are. I don't so know. So you're telling me, though, when I cut into this, yeah. I won't. there'll be no maggots. And when I eat it, maggots won't explode in my stomach no. from the larvae Ma from the pork. Yeah, right. So how maggots are, come to be, pass okay. is flies turn into maggots. Right. So once flies go into your meat and then they have sex with each other and have babies, the babies are maggots. Something like that. I'm not exactly sure how That's not going to happen in the pork chop. Because no. that's what we said on the one episode. That's right. why I said And everybody got mad because we didn't know. And they told us maggots come from flies. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do I this. I am so excited for you because okay. there's only one first pork chop, right? Now, let me... Okay. Is there a bone in here or is it... There is a bone, but it's, it, it plays like a steak. You know, you can eat around the bone. All right. Let me do that. All right. All right. I'm like genuinely... Yes. Get in there nice. Wow. I mean... Hold on. Okay. There we go. I mean, first of all, this thing cuts like butter. Is that... Uh, yeah. Let me ask what is that. this your favorite thing to eat? So wait, I'm checking right now. I, I love a, a, a grilled pork chop. It's unbelievable. What do you think about it? There's a nice char on that. Some nice spices, right? I There's like a nice it. And rub. Now you're saying that spice that's not larvae. That's no, no those aren't maggots. That is not going to be a maggot. Maggots come from flies. They brought there when they bring they, br they bring that extra baggage with them. It's like jumping in cold water. Okay. It's like jumping in cold water. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a day of daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Take your time. You might have got some fat on the edge there. If I'm being a hundred percent honest with you. I'm being, uh, this is genuine, this is genuinely, I'm genuinely dead serious what I'm about to say right now. Maybe the best thing I've ever eaten <laughs> in my entire life. I swear to God, that may be, like, I almost feel like I've been, I've turned my back on an entire food. I'm trying, I've been trying to tell you, it's just so good. This is like, truly. It's like butter. Like, do they always do like that, or is that just the chef? Just unbelievable. There's many different ways. This is prepared a certain way. Okay, now I have to go. It's this, this some. <laughs> okay, so now, can you eat raw pork? Is that okay to eat a raw? Okay, so dude, I got to be honest with. You. I mean, dude, I. I... Isn't <laughs> it's good, right? I mean, <laughs> Sal, you've been missing out, pork. Yeah, I mean, that's not really how they're eating, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. I mean, you got a little smudge there. Yeah, take that so, COVID. Now get, take, uh, give me yours. Uh, my COVID rag? <laughs> that's one of the best things I've ever eaten in my... What's the sauce on? What is it? Is it just the pork is so good? Pork is... <laughs> It doesn't look appetizing, but it is, right? It's uh, the, the rub is unbelievable, isn't it? Just yeah. a nice grilled pork. I see how lean the meat is oh my God. and tender and tasty. It's bursting with taste. So how do they make bacon out of this? Uh, I don't know any of that stuff. It's a different part of the pig, though. Do you regret not eating pork? Look at you really made a mess. I made a mess. Yeah, so, so what do you think now? What do you think? 
You could you could have been eating pork chops this whole time. I regret. I fully one thousand percent regret not ever tasting a pork chop in my life. Even if it is going to turn into maggots and larvae, which I still kind of am convinced it is, in my stomach, I'll just have a long day in the bathroom tomorrow, and I'll come back the next day and eat a second pork chop. It's almost worth the maggots. It's worth the maggots. Now, now the goat cheese is next. Different. Different thing. So this... You have it in a salad, but maybe you want to get it in a nice chunk and just eat it first. This is... It's, it's, I got to be honest with you. This is grossing me out to have to eat the goat cheese. Really? The pork chop was so appetizing and good. This, I got to be honest with you, like, I'm skeeving this right now. Well, a lot of people don't just eat a chunk of goat cheese on its own. You know, you have it here mixed into a salad. You have some complimentary flavors with it. So should I eat it with the salad, or do you think we got to eat this raw? I think both. I think you eat it raw first. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I mean... Really? (laughs) No, no! Really? You're having that bad a reaction? You're going to wa- wash that down with Pinot Grigio. Oh, mm-mm, mm-mm. I can't do it. Really? Really? It's that bad. I can't. What's in here? Apples? I can't do it. I, I got to get taste that out. <laughs> it's that bad. No, what are you doing? No, that's crazy. Oh, you look barbaric. The goat cheese is you, disgusting. You have to, I, can't, I can't look at you like this. I'm going to start dry heaving. I can't look at all I'm going to start driving. I eat the goat cheese. You, 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 have a whole, you have to wipe your mouth down and, and wipe your hands. It's, it's, it's too much. No, dude, that, the goat cheese, but, Sal, but, disgusting. Wait a second now. I sound like DeRosa. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you were DeRosa, you would say something outlandish, like, yeah. Goat cheese is not available in 40 states. Or yeah. <laughs> Sal, Man, I got to be honest, I think the goat cheese is delicious. Delicious. It's just creamy. <laughs> So, it's, it's so good. Ah. The salad and the apples, fantastic. The goat cheese, literally, dude, I almost threw up. That goat, that, I saw that. That was, that a, was genuine, a real reaction. I can't deal with the goat cheese. I never want to eat goat cheese again. I'm actually done with goats. Are you serious? I but don't look, want to do anything get, from get, goats anymore. Get yourself an apple and a walnut on the fork and have it with everything combined. Walnuts is another thing I'm new to. I can't ever do the goat cheese again. I, I Literally, the goat cheese. The goat cheese is a hard, it's, the goat cheese is a hard no. The wow. pork chop is, I could probably eat, I would eat your pork chop if it was cooked to the right temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah mine you could die from. That pork chop was the best, I'm, I'm being dead serious. Maybe that's why I think the goat cheese is so bad, because the pork chop was so good, so I was expecting to have balls blown off again, because the pork chop is life-changing, and then the goat cheese is con- reconfirming why I never had goat cheese in my life. I don't like goat cheese. You're blowing me away with your disdain for the goat cheese. I feel like it's this creamy, delicious, elevated, uh, elevating ingredient. Thinking about a goat, Stop. just thinking about a yeah, goat but, yeah, and the cheese <laughs> is really, I mean, the goats have, they have che- chin hair. Yeah, but what you're doing now is you're, tr- you're thinking of a goat as a whole while you eat a salad. I, I'll, if this pork chop was growing out of the side of a pig, I'd eat it off the side of a living pig. Right. The goat cheese, it's, it's, it's a disgusting thing. It's, I, I never want to have the goat cheese again, but, the, but this, the apple salad and whatever this is, I mean, compliments to the chef this is a on sweet, the puree. A sweet potato puree. I mean, pasta. I feel like a newborn baby right here. <laughs> I love the puree. <laughs> the puree is good. Yeah. Mm, the puree is good. Oh, my God. It's outrageous. I mean, the chef. It really is. Chef. This puree is outrageous, chef. I love this. I love this. Woo! The puree. I'm wow, telling you. Wow, the puree is delicious. I feel like an infant. Wow. Oh, I just got some goat cheese in the puree. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest. I think he's being a little over the top. Because he's at, he's he's literally almost throwing up. Wow. I guess, you know, people don't like it. I guess he's one of those people. Wow, I I really I, don't, I, almost threw up. I know I know you shouldn't be focusing on goats as a whole when you eat it. I think that's the issue. Look, you, you got water all over your limbs. I, oh on my Lulus. <laughs> goat cheese. I'm gonna look into the camera right now, and I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what I mean. Every word of this. I would rather be beheaded by ISIS <laughs> than ever have to eat goat cheese again. <laughs> don't put that out there. Bring it on. I would honestly, if honestly, though, <laughs> the, the situation he described, I, I'm 
call me what you will. I'd rather have goat cheese. Literally, if you ever had me in a hostage situation no. where I had government secrets, the uh, you, I would give them up in a second if the if the if the interrogator just put a little bit of goat cheese on my lip. If he just had a little spoon and said, "Tell me everything," I'd say, "No, no, what no." What if you had to lick goat cheese like off of a goat cheese uh, off a goat's like beard? Like you put the goat cheese on the goat and you just said, "Go right up to the goat." No, no, I'd rather, I'd rather. Yeah. I, they, what if it was called? So are you getting thrown off by the words goat and cheese put together and it's goat cheese? What if it was called something like special cream or something? I don't know. <laughs> or Maybe. just like, uh, you know, whatever it is. It had its own name. I think goat. I think goat. Me thinking of a goat is making me. Don't make that face. I swear to God, because I'm that guy. I'm the guy. I have a weak constitution. <laughs> so you ever see that scene from Stand By Me? When somebody throws up and somebody else throws up and they're yeah, all eating yeah, blueberry yeah. pies and then yeah. everyone's Every, throwing up. Throwing everyone. up yeah. You just did a dry heave and I, everything in me, I felt about to dry heave myself. Uh, well, uh, it's it's one of those things where the goat cheese was so disgusting to me, I immediately felt it in my butt. You ever get like a chill yes. when you feel it right in your butthole? I, I felt the mean. goat cheese right in my butthole immediately. Right. Where the pork chop, I felt in my penis, which is a different feeling. <laughs> it's one's good, one's bad. Where do you feel the Pinot Gris? The Pinot Gris, baby. You got I've, goat cheese all over your wine glass. I can't do it. I can't you, do it. You, you ate it so slow. There's like remnants of goat I'm, cheese I'm everywhere sorry, now. I'm just going to have to do this. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to have to finish that entire bottle. <laughs> Fine. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't go near an end to That's what we do. <laughs> See what I really have to say at Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> Pork chop is is a delightful, delectable treat that you've been missing out on. Your it's life. one of those things where, like, again, trying to like you know, you know, cut calories and not eat bread. I was always like, all I can ever really eat is salmon and chicken because I don't really eat too much red meat. I'm like salmon, chicken. Lean. Now I'm gonna eat this. It's lean. Now pork chop. If I see if I see a pork chop, the only thing is because the chef is such a great chef. The only thing that I'm considering is maybe. <laughs> The chef did, you know, some tricks of the trade right. and made the pork chop taste even better. And if I go and order it from a restaurant, it won't have the chef's touch. It's because a journey. Because, because you're going to have to take it. That's amazing. The yeah. goat cheese, though, can go f*** itself. All right. I'm done with go Sal. I'm done with goat cheese. That's if wild. You no, dude. That's I, wild. You if you ever made me sound. goat cheese again, I swear to God, I put every corner of every pillow directly at you. <laughs> It'd be like a laser beam of pillows, I will never, corners. I will never bring goat cheese anywhere near you. Don't do it. I don't want, if we go to a petting zoo, I'm skipping the goats. I, I can't believe it. What do you, how, what do you, what do you I don't know. take on goat cheese? Goat cheese is disgusting. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm not a goat cheese person. And I, goats wow. themselves are kind of like, Satanic to me. Yes, maybe that's what it is. They're a satanic animal. I feel like I'm eating the cheese of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think on the road, we should go to the worst restaurant in a small town and have you order the pork chop there. Oh, yeah. Well, then you're in for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Goat cheese is unbelievable. Huh? Now, we do have a dessert component. Which, this is mind-blowing. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, we talked about I Never Had Goat Cheese. Or a pork chop, which we thought was crazy. Even crazier to me, Sal has never in his life, he grew up in the United States of America, yeah. has never had a Cinnabon. No. It's not like you grew up in Uzbekistan. No. You grew up in the United States of America, yeah. in the state of New York, the metropolis of potentially the world. You never had a Cinnabon. You never had a Cine. No, I never had a Cine. And I can't <laughs> believe that that's a bit, as big a deal as you're making it. Is it really that big a deal? I mean, what's deal? the bigger deal, pimp? What do you think the bigger deal is? Me not having pork chop or goat cheese? Or, or Cinnabon. Well, we should tweet this out. We're on taste buds. We have to survey. Wait, 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 wait. But a pork chop is from is a is a dish that has been around for thousands of years since the ancient samurai. Right. But uh, Cinnabon is like uh, you know last 20, 30 years. So it's like I feel like it's crazier that you haven't had a pork chop. What I do you think? What I do you mean, think, pimp? Knowing that you dabble in marijuana, I'm very surprised you haven't had a Cinnabon. I know. And but I also dabbles dabble. in CBD, sundayscaries.com, promo what, code, hey, babe. That's what it is. And here we All go. All right, so here we go. So I'm so, cut it. Well, yeah, you want to cut it? Yeah. Or cut it? Well, um, I think the chef gave us a... Uh, oh, she, yeah, she, the chef gave us a, a Cinnabon knife. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Now, by the way, keep in mind... It looks Cinna dry. One Cinnabon, 880 cows, babe. One cine, 880. No. Yes. Oh, my God. How do you... What do you do? I mean, you just got to so go... You, you got to just... You got to log out of your MyFitnessPal. It's like eating a Big Mac or something like it's, that. It's what it is. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Here, let's see. Here. Here, pull, pull your side. 
Okay. Oh wow, it's dense. The, yeah, it's this dense thing's and heavy. it's gooey. And the thing is, it gets layers like upon layers. Hockey so you see, it opens up like an onion. The cinnabon's like a like a manufactured onion. When you eat an ants, there's more goo, more cinnamon. So this isn't goat cheese. This is cinnago frosting. Then the inside, it's like it's like a strudel. It's it's un, it's the best I think thing that Americans ever made, and I'm not sure if it was made in America. You, 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 but this is this is bad for you. Look at that. Look at on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. There's all sorts of uh, caramelization going on there. You got yourself a nice cream. Yeah. Layers. Okay. I can smell it. I, I mean, don't have I know, COVID. I, could, I, get, I can guess by the smell what this is going to taste like. I've had pastry before. I've had cinnamon. I've had icing. Well, you, but but you never had it. You've never, never had, had it all together. You've never had a man. You've never had a United States chemical induced cinnamon. Absolutely not. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. You've never had anything like that, Sal. Be honest with me. Wow. Never had anything like that. Wow. I'm getting waves of flavor. Mm-hmm. I mean, that cinnamon, is, it almost feels like I'm, there was a stick of big red in there. Yeah, you're also going to get <laughs> waves of feeling lightheaded because your sugar is through the roof. Yeah, I mean, that icing, what is that? Dude, I, it's not goat cheese. Oh, my God. The icing is outrageous. Let me see. <laughs> Whoa. Wowie, wowie, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm. This must sound good over the airwaves. Mm. It's so good. This is like that AMSR stuff, right? I know. Just, just it's Cinnabon. Is it? Am I getting that right? AMSR, mm -hmm. Cinnabon. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. I mean, there's something going on in there that's not going on at a glance. Like something in the middle there that's happening. It's like it gets to be a gooey treat that really comes it's together. It's a little thing the Spanish call azúcar, sugar, sugar baby. Yeah, they're finding ways to load more and more sugar into that puppy. Wow, the cinnabon, the goo, a fresh hot cinnabon at the airport. I don't care if the plane crashed; I'd be happy. Yeah, I can imagine it coming right out of the oven. But you can't. You, I think, if you eat one of these alone, your whole day has to be rerouted. If like, you start your day off with one of those, you, you, you can't can, eat again until the next week. You, you're gonna, you, you can't have one of these. Well, how often can you have a Cinnabon? No, I mean, uh, that. okay, I'm being honest with you. I used to, when I was Chrissy you, Cinnabon's cold soap. You, oh, yeah. You ate your Cinnabon? Oh, it's gone. Your whole half is gone? Sal, I could have eaten two Cinnabons by the time you ate a half. Wow. No, I love Cinnabons. The Cinnabon cereal, fantastic. So the Cinnabon, um, um, uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's so good and and it's got so many calories, like I think eight or nine hundred in one Cinnabon, yeah, that you just have to kind of accept. Accept it. Yeah, it's like it's, it's we're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah, and you let go. The, a Cinnabon is good for a person who's who's wants to, who says to themselves, "I'm going to start to get back in shape and go back to the gym when I hit rock bottom." If you want to go quickly to rock bottom with yeah. your weight, Cinnabon's the answer. What's the most? <laughs> have you ever had more than one Cinnabon, Sal? Are you kidding me? Oh my God, really? So really? my cholesterol is 270. My blood pressure is 170 over 110. You... I used to be 250 pounds. Babe, have I had one Cinnabon? You ready for what I'm about to tell you? No. Yes. What my dad, what I used to do. Come on, dude. Not daily, but what I've done many times in my life is on the same sitting, gotten two Cinnabons from the Carvel on 86th Street, and then walked up two, three blocks to Nono's Pizza and gotten an entire zucchini slice pie. And I've eaten five or six zucchini slices back to back, washed them down with two Cinnabons. And they also have, here's the other thing. I got you a, a big Cinnabon. They also have the mini Cinnabon packs, and they also have cinnamon bun, just the inside of it, like cinnamon bun rolls with dip, with the little icy frosting dip. I didn't even get you extra icing. Wow. Normally, what I do is You're I'll take a bite hard. of a Cinnabon, and I'll do a shot of the, uh, the frosting. No. Sal. And, and, and do you, I thought, what do you feel like after that? I feel like I need to go to the hospital, and right, I usually do. right. Oh, yeah. No, dude. If you, you tell me you put down one Cinnabon and then you're looking at another one. You're like, I'm going to have another Cinnabon. I got to be honest with wow, you. I'm not going to I'm not going to do it. But I could I'm talking about in 30 seconds devout like a chihuahua. Yeah. Like, you know, when you give a dog a treat, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I could do with the Cinnabon. A chihuahua. A chihuahua. Chihuahua. What am I? What am I saying? No, you say that like a chihuahua. What is it? Chihuahua. 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 Wait, I don't know if it's a chihuahua. It's is it, a chihuahua. What am I saying wrong? Well, I think it's Chihuahua. Chihuahua? Chihuahua. And I'm saying Chihuahua. 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 Uh, a Chihuahua. No, no. Not Chihuahua. Chihuahua. 
Chihuahua. Chihuahua. But why are you saying wow? Wow, wow. Ch- Ch- Say it again. Chew. Chew. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Like wow, wow. Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yeah. Like, what am I like saying? Chihuahua. What am I saying? Chihuahua. A chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's wah, not wow. So you, you're, you're, you're going wow, and you're also going wow. So you're seeing a chihuahua. <laughs> A chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yo, this my this my yo, this next rap you're gonna love. Give it up for little chihuahua. Little chihuahua. <laughs> chihuahua. A chihuahua. I could be wrong. Chihuahua. I, my, I well, had a chihuahua. It's named after a province in Mexico, the Chihuahua province. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. Right? I didn't know that. I don't know. Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Mm, it's not Chihuahua, though. It's Chihuahua. Chew? I could be wrong. Chihuahua. Yeah. I'll what say. do you say, Dachshund or Dachshund? Chihuahua. Dachshund. Dachshund. Me too. Dash. Why people say Dachshund? People say Dachshund. I'm like, what are you fucking a German yeah. in the German military? We're Dachshund? in modern day America. Wiener dog. Is that it? Wiener dog. How do you say it? You put it Whoa! She's saying it how you're saying it. Yeah. Chihuahua. She's saying Chihuahua. Chihuahua. She's saying it that you're right. Chihuahua. 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 But it's not Chihuahua? Chi. Wow, spell it. S- Chihuahua. C H I H U A H U A. Chihuahua. C. Tell me if I'm right. C H I H U A H U A. Chihuahua. 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 C H I H U A H U A is Chihuahua. C H I H U A H U A. Pronounce Chihuahua. So then, why are you saying Chihuahua? Chihuahua. Because I'm using the common dialect oh, of see, the look, Mexican people. Why Chihuahua is pronounced chi- Chihuahua. 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 Why is Chihuahua pronounced Chihuahua and not Chihuahua? It's saying Chihuahua. Chihuahua. First, let's try a simple comparison. Say the second pronunciation out loud. Chihuahua. Now, now say the first pronunciation out loud. Chihuahua. Notice how your mouth takes the same shape for wawa sounds for both. There is no way to say who ah without making the W sound. That is wa. Wa. <laughs> Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Wa. Chihuahua. Okay. <laughs> Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Samurais are bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> that's not from this even. That's oh. old. Yeah, but you guys know that already. That was right? when we met a week ago. By the way, not to not to say anything, but God bless Tom Brady. Yes, Tom Brady, thank God, won, won, won the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. 43-year-old guy, oldest guy in the NFL. Yeah, and he won it. And, uh, and also, you know, listen, because, you know, kids, it's not all about winning and losing. It's it's what you do with the thing and what you do with the game. And I just want to give a quick shout-out to the Kansas, Kansas City, City Chiefs. Chiefs coming in second place. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes doing fantastic out there, down there in Kansas City. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Want to pause this or you want to just lean yeah, let's back? Pause it, let's pause it. Dude, how about this? You know my girlfriend's pregnant. Yes. Literally, in the middle of the night last night, I wake up. It's 2.30 in the morning. I smell cookies being baked. And I, because, because it was the middle of the night, I didn't know what was happening. You were startled by this fresh baked smell. So I wake up, I start to smell what I thought in my head, even though it was cookies, I thought I was smelling burning toast. Yeah. So I wake up, I look at the ceiling, I go, stroke. I thought I was having a stroke. <laughs> so I, I was like, stroke. And then I go over to touch her and be like, you know, and she's not there. So then I start to get nervous. I'm like, what happened? Like, did yeah. somebody kidnap my family and is like baking cookies? <laughs> then, then I'm thinking, is, is, is the house burning down? But again, pregnancy. Fresh cook- baked cooks, 2.30 a.m. 2.30 a.m. pregnancy crazy. Did you wake up and eat any? Yes. Really? But here's what I At did. At 2.30? Yes, because you have to. With a cup of you almond do? milk. Yeah. Okay. Be- well, you have to because here's the thing. Pregnancy, she's going through a craving. She doesn't want to be baking cookies and eating fistfuls of cookie dough. You're but, being supportive. But she's like, it's the baby. So I'm like, listen, I'll support. You know, <laughs> listen, your boobs are growing because of the milk. Right. My boobs are growing because of the cookies. Right. The bottom line is we both got big tits now. Right, right. So, <laughs> so, so, and we're just going to have to deal with this, you know, whatever it is. Right, right, right. So I, I started eating the cookies with the almond milk. And it was one of those things yeah. where, again, pregnancy cravings, pregnancy emotions. I just found myself... Five minutes before that, I was asleep, having a wonderful dream, just enjoying my sleep. Now it's just, it was probably 2.37. You're fully awake. I'm fully awake, eating cookies fresh out of the oven, consoling my pregnant girlfriend who's crying for no reason, dripping tears into the cookies. No reason why she's crying. Right. She just started hysterical crying, baking cookies, eating cookies at 2.37 in the morning. And that's just what 
That's what it is. That's just what it is when, when a woman's pregnant. Is you just have like when she was pregnant with our first child, I came yeah. home one day and she had her hand, one hand in a jar of Nutella, <laughs> one hand in a jar of mustard, and she was eating bite for bite. Oh no! Nutella Whoa. and mustard. I come in because I had a long night of shows. I come in and I say, "What are you doing?" And she goes, <laughs> "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I was like, "I'm coming home from work." Right. And she was like, "Is this funny to you?" <laughs> And I was like, no, I, I mean, the jokes I was doing a couple hours ago, I guess, were pretty funny to me. <laughs> and she goes, you're sleeping on the couch. Wow. I swear to God, nothing. And then I went to sleep on the couch because, I mean, you know, I'm not going to deal with that maniac. Right. But I, she was eight months pregnant at the time. I slept on the couch. She woke up. I woke up two, in, you know, in the morning because, you know, the, my living room is my living room and my kitchen. I woke up to the smell of fresh made pancakes. She had made me a stack of pancakes that were unbelievable. Do you think a guy has ever told a woman you're sleeping on the couch? No. Have you ever, would you even think to I do that? I tried it once. I tried. You, you tried to tell a, a female, you're out, get on the couch, yeah. Mr. And then, I, and then I had to live with my dad for six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you, don't, you never hear about the guy telling the woman to sleep on the couch. No, I wouldn't be able to deal with it. Like, if even if even if I was, there's been many times where I'm, like, snoring, like, at the top of my lungs snoring, yeah. and she'll go out on the couch, yeah, and yeah. I'll wake up and be like, go in the bed, I'll sleep on the couch. I right. can't have it where it's like, the girl sleeping on you the couch you, can't, it's not right. You got to correct your snoring, though. I know I do got to correct. You try to you got you got to do get an apparatus or something. It's not good for you. Well, there's a, actually an apparatus that I saw on the internet. It's called Snoreballs. So this is the name of the company. Look at Snoreballs. <laughs> Stop snoring with these. Yeah, Snoreballs. So um, where can you scroll? Down? I just saw it. That's a tennis ball. Oh, that's a tennis ball. There was a thing called Snoreballs. Use a tennis ball to improve breathing in the sleep. Oh, okay. Oh, you're putting it behind your neck. Is that what it is? Yeah. That's so what, yeah. Yeah. You yeah like that? Because. I used to get, I used to snore all the time, and I always have sore throats all the time. But now, yes. I just haven't. Knock on wood, been sick. I guess because of the mass in the Purell or whatever. But I get less and less sore throat, so I'm not snoring as much. But um, every time I would snore, and she would go on the couch, I would just say, you know, yeah, like let me, let's switch positions. There's been a couple of times where I've been I've been relegated to I didn't want to sleep on the couch. So I just crawled in bed and slept with my daughter, where I would just sleep in my daughter's bed, which yeah. is I best frightening for her when she wakes up and she's like, "What? Who is this <laughs> beast of a man in my bed?" Yeah. Let me. What do you? What's your take on eating food in bed? Eating food in bed? Yeah. Like, do you ever make a sandwich and then like you're already watching TV from bed, and then you just go sit, prop up yourself in bed with a pillow, sit upright, watch TV, and have yourself a soup or a breakfast in bed or a sandwich or a dinner? You ever eat dinner in bed or is that? Some people think it's it's like a like it's. Off the table, not even an option. Disgusting to eat in your bed where you lay. If crumbs get in the bed, if they think about it. It's, it's unhygienic. Bed bugs are. Are you like f that? Here's what I'm going to tell you, Sal Manella. Yeah. Which is a great nickname for yourself, Sal sure. Manella. Sal Manella. Yeah. Well, I just had raw pork. We'll see what happens. Well, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. If by the way, if you do have to go to the emergency room tonight, we will be still be continuing the podcast live 100%. from the ER, and we'll be doing ad reads live from the ER if if Sal Valcano gets Sal Manella. That's a that's a promise. Um, you you pose that question. Do I ever eat food in bed? Yeah. Food in bed. I would say, true story. Yeah. I would say, three to five times a month. Maybe a little bit less since I've been trying to watch what I eat. But three to five, I'll say three times a month, I wake up in the morning with crumbs in my belly button from eating in bed. Really? So I'll, I'll consistently have a crumb in my belly button. There was a couple of times where I found a full M&M in the belly button, which is nice <laughs> to wake up to because you start the day off with some nice candy. Wow. So you eat in bed. You know, what, you know what? I never really did per se, but then... I started when, we, when I started working on the road and be going yeah. away. This like a lot of times in our hotel room, yeah. you know, you don't have necessarily a place to eat other than the bed. Yeah, my so, daughter eats in the bed constantly. I mean, when I literally when I like sometimes my daughter, I will go wake my daughter for school. There's been multiple times I found a skittle in her ear, you know, because she'll have skittle like she'll she'll hoard food. She, yeah, uh, she's scurrying to bed with yeah, skittles. Yeah, rice crispy treats in her socks. Who gets right? Who gets crumbs in their socks? She'll have rice crispy treat crumbs in her socks. How does she do that? I don't know because. She's eating in bed and somehow the food just winds up in her feet. 
It's ridiculous. How I can't tell you how many times, and I don't know how this happens. You know, you'd be giving her a bath, you'd be scrubbing her butt, you open up her butt cheeks to scrub her butt, food no, falls out. Come oh, come yeah. on. Is that true? You'll see kids. Is that really true? Kids get food in the craziest places. <laughs> <laughs> I had an M&M stuck up That's my a nose. New show on ABC. Yeah, I'll never forget. Kids get food in the craziest places. My mother was getting her hair done at Europa in Ridgewood, Queens. Shout out Europa. Shout out Europa. She was sitting down getting her hair done. She gives me a quarter to go over to the to the you know machine where you would put a quarter in and then turn the knob. Yeah, and M and M's would come I out. Have one of those downstairs. Yeah, yeah. I got an M and M, a peanut M and M, which is a jumbo M and M. I put it, stuck it up my nose because oh, I was seven years done. old. Got the M and M, got the peanut M and M was so lodged in my nose that I had to call the fire department no. and a firefighter who has to actually do real emergencies had to now sit me down on his lap and and get this like little metal scraping tool and he and he got it up in my nose and then he pulled it out of my nose and because I was just maybe just so nervous or whatever it popped out onto my shirt where I was sitting and I picked it up out of my shirt no. and ate it. Oh. <laughs> you, you should have tried to like crush the. We couldn't crush the chocolate. We couldn't. And my mother is just a nervous person. Person, we got nervous and we called 911 and they were like, they showed up and they were like, what's the emergency? And we're like, oh, this kid's got an m and pe- a peanut M&M stuck up his nose. Oh my God. But they said the whole fire truck and everything. Listen, when it comes to paying off debt, it can often feel like an uphill battle. High interest rates resulting in minimum monthly payments keep you in an endless cycle of debt. Upstart can help you get ahead. My father, Barney Rubble really needs this. My dad needs this. This kid's always in debt. Instead of asking me for money, he can use Upstart. So here it goes. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash hey babe. That's upstart.com slash hey babe. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Here's what it is. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and employment history. So a lot of you guys have jobs out there that listen to this podcast. A lot of you don't. So we'll see what Upstart decides to do. This means they offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. $50,000. Do you dread looking at your credit card statement every month? I do. I don't even look at it half the time. I'm just like, yeah, I probably have money. And then the card gets declined. And I'm like, I guess I don't have money. Listen, we don't blame you. Upstart can lift that weight right off your shoulders so that you can finally feel the relief of being free of credit card debt. Okay, that's what we want to be is free of credit card debt. That's the goal. And Upstart's going to get you there. Just go to upstart.com slash hey, babe. That's upstart.com slash H-E-Y-B-A-B-E. And your debt's going to get cleared. And they're going to do the five-minute online rate check. And it's just going to be nice. And I'm going to send this to my father. Listen, everybody knows me. I'm Chrissy the Wino. I love Pinot Grige. I like to get a little crazy. Bright Cellars. Let me talk to you guys about Bright Cellars. This is a wine service that helps you find wines you love while making wine more accessible to everyone. So Bright Cellars comes on in and it just, it hooks you up with the wine you want. You know, you've been drinking wine for years. Bright Cellars pairs you with unique wines using their crazy accurate algorithm. Everybody's about the algorithm now. Everybody's about tapping into the database. Even wine companies are doing it. That's why Bright Cellars is on top because they use all the new data. And they can, pair you, they can pair you up to six wines that fit your taste profile. You just take their 30-second quiz, let the wine magic happen, and boom, they pair you with the wines. I mean, dude, I mean, I'm looking for an alternative to Pinot Grigio. I got to use this because, you know, Pinot Grigio, after a while, just starts to all taste the same. And I like, you know, obviously I love Italian men, but maybe I want some French men in my life. Maybe I want a little baguette in the throat. For our babes, we're giving you 50% off, 50% off your first six bottles from bright sellers okay that's a lot of money that's a very good deal all you got to do is go to brightsellers.com slash hey babe that's bright sellers c-e-l-l-a-r-s dot com slash hey babe so once again bright sellers b-r-i-g-h-t-c-e-l-l-a-r-s dot com slash hey babe 50% off your first six bottle order one more time that's brightsellers.com slash hey babe 50% 50% off your first order. Let's drink some wine together. Let's get drunk. Let's text our exes. One of the last times I remember really eating. So I ordered, I was I was on the road and I came back and I was like really tired, right? And I ordered uh, room service. You ever, I had a per diem that I had way, to spend. Uh, yes. I, I, I've, been, I've been on the, I've been in the room service with you and you, you, you're a fun room service guy. Yeah. You go apps. 
entrees and desserts. Full variety. 100%. Yeah, they're literally, it's like, I feel like the fucking King Louis of France when, I'm, I'm, when well, I go well, to already on the road. Yeah. There's nothing to look forward to. Nothing. I'm watching extra for seven hours straight. It's me and Mario Lopez, yeah. nobody else. I know, dude. You know what's so funny? Somebody tweeted at me once, I forgot, when we had went on the road a couple years ago. They're like, oh, you and Sal must have so much fun on the road, you must just take over that town. And I'm like, we immediately go back to the hotel room <laughs> after every show, smoke sativa, every type of CBD, and get apps, entrees, and desserts in the hotel room, and we watch movies... Yeah. Uh, from Sal's PlayStation that he brought. Yeah, that's it. That, that, that's genuinely all we do. That's all I do. I don't think we've went out, and we've been, you know, invited. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know that I've ever? went out to one bar ever. Ever. We maybe. always have a nice lunch. <laughs> yeah. we, go to a, we go to an antique store. <laughs> yeah. We do the shows, and we go back to the hotel room. That's our life. And I love it. I actually love it. It's no we pressure. We do light shopping. Yeah. A nice lunch. Yeah. Maybe hit up a candle store. I've never been in a town with Sal where we've walked past an antique store that we haven't went into. It's almost like if we don't go into the antique store, I'm like, Sal, are you mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, do yourself a favor. Go into the go teaking. You got the best candles in the game. I, I love the candles, too. I, I, you know what? I've turned over a new leaf. I want candles burning in my home at all times. 100%. You know, I, I have this thing with candles when I buy them, right? Sometimes they're like, you know, you, you can get cheap candles. You can get reasonably priced candles, right? Go for it. Wow. What do you think? You look like John F. Kennedy. Really? Yeah. Amazing. Oh. Yeah, you look like you look like someone from that time, or at least you look like Kevin Costner in JFK. Playing JFK. You yeah. can see. You don't got bad vision. Mm. Uh, is, does this mean I have bad vision? Because I'm seeing clear. Yeah. I'm seeing crystal clear that you have I food mean, in your beard. <laughs> oh, I do? <laughs> oh, it just went away. Do I really? No, no, it's gone. You got to tell me these things. I, well, I can only see because of the glasses. I, I, I never seen you right now. You really look like... Kevin Costner and Is JFK. it a good look or a bad look? What do we think? No, it's distinguished. I'm getting a whole vibe from you that I've never got before. So should I do this? Wow. What should we do? Wow. Take a picture of me with the glasses, Pimp. Let's see what the... Let's you see you do... Because they are glasses that are like reminiscent of the 19, like, 30s, 40s, 50s. Let me see. What do we think? <laughs> oh, my eyes are closed. Do one more. Let's see. You look... You look... I tell you, it's a whole different mood for you. Let's see. There you go. You look distinguished. If you were telling me about history in those, I believe you even more. That's right. So you want to you want, ask me a history question? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget. Where were you the first time you saw JFK and found out JFK was shot? Um, where was I? I think I was in second grade. My teacher, Mrs. Link, um, told us that that uh, that JFK had just been shot. Right, Mrs. Link. That's <laughs> no, no, I don't remember. See, You're not the, doing retina damage right now. No, I feel fine. You see me clearly. Well, you know, for the longest time, I thought JFK, I, I got their deaths mixed up. I thought JFK died in a plane crash and JFK Jr. got shot in Dallas. But it's really JFK got shot, shot in Dallas, Dallas JFK, JFK Jr. Jr. died in the plane crash. Yes. Rock Hudson got into a plane crash, too. Uh, didn't he die of AIDS? Didn't Rock Hudson have AIDS? He died AIDS? of a plane crash. I think he, Rock, but didn't Rock oh, Hudson? Oh, maybe he had AIDS? Wasn't he like one of the first celebrities to openly say he has AIDS? I think so, but I don't think he died from AIDS. I thought he died from a plane crash. But you don't know if the, he could have survived the plane crash. You know it, if the AIDS was a contributing factor. Right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> died in his sleep from AIDS. Why did I think he died in a plane crash? Yeah. Was Rock Hudson ever in a plane crash? If you died, if you die of a plane crash, if you're in a plane crash and you also have AIDS, God wants you dead. God doesn't want you alive at yeah, all. If you, if he's, if he got the AIDS, chips are being stacked. Where it's like, listen, someone's trying I'm, to tell you something. Yeah, I gave you AIDS and put you to play crash. Yeah. yeah, it's over. I yeah. also have weirdest food stuff that's common up here. Put ice cubes in cereal? I've done that before. Never in my life. Why You've would never put ice cubes in the cereal? For what reason? What about washing your hands with ice cubes? You ever do that? What? Um, you know, if I was, I'm sure that if I was like, you know, somewhere where there was no water and there was ice and I wanted to clean my hands off. You've done that. I imagine I have, but why would you put ice cubes in cereal? Just to make it a little colder. <laughs> because my... Why not just put more new milk in it? Because I usually drink almond milk and we don't put the almond milk in the fridge. Is that bad? Well, you need to put almond milk in the fridge. Why do you have to put almond milk in the fridge? It's not from... It's, it's almonds. It's not going to go bad. There's certain almond milk. almond milk that you can like that that they sell that you can keep not in the fridge, but then there's yeah, that there's almond, almond milk. milk that you can yeah. But once you open it, you got oh, so you just had extra in the closet. Once you open it, it has to go in the fridge. Really? I believe I would refrigerate take the after opening. The corn should be stored in the refrigerator. Most brands state that the milk should be used within seven to ten days of opening. I do not abide by that almond milk rule. The seven to ten days 
is is a is a is a it's a large crock of horseshit. Sal, I got to be honest with you. Uh, the almond milk that I'm currently drinking right now at Mont. home. Four months. <laughs> Easily. I cannot believe that it's seven to ten days. So it tastes fine. 120 days opened. Easily. Open, opened and outside next to the refrigerator. I actually keep my milk is next to my toaster oven. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You are drinking four-month-old non-refrigerated almond milk, and that's why you put an ice cube in it. Well, it's, yeah, but, 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 but it's not. We only opened up. We have a surplus of almond milk. The kids right. love almond milk. Right. They got lactose intolerant family. Right. The the almond milk that we have that's four months old has been unopened out of the, uh, you know, out, like okay. It, but I opened up that almond milk because I just went to Phoenix. And then you just keep it outside the yeah, fridge. Yeah, I opened I opened up that almond milk eight or nine days ago. No, next to the toaster. <laughs> no, that's oven. not good. I I, I one My time my kid does complain of stomach aches. <laughs> There was one time I had almond milk, and I was like, oh, that tastes not like almond milk. And I must have had it, uh, you know, like a couple of months in the fridge after I opened it, and that was no good. But but largely, I'll, I'll drink almond milk. But what did it weeks. taste like? What did it taste like no good? There was like a weird lingering aftertaste. See, I can power through that stuff. Oh, did I tell you I ate straight up mold the other day? Yes, you did. You told I, us. I told you. You told, and then, but but it you said you're fine. Disgusting. Though. Disgusting, right? Yeah, because I was like, this tastes very peculiar, and then I looked down, and the whole package was like green. But you never got sick. I didn't. That's why I don't think the raw pork's going to take you down. I think you got a strong stomach. Okay, but I think the raw pork is different. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what's different is goat cheese. I don't want that at all ever again in my life, dude. Babes. Yep. We are in the thick of 2020's ugly sequel, and guess what? Life can still be stressful as f. Yeah, I mean, if you're feeling that existential dread whenever you have a couple of minutes of downtime, you might be experiencing those scaries. Luckily, our partners at Sunday Scaries make the best F and CBD products to turn those WTFs into LOLs. <laughs> Forget about an old awkward date or that time you responded to a server telling you to enjoy your meal with a good old you, you too. too. Sunday Scaries is here to provide you the remedy to make life not so scary. Their CBD gummies are so perfect. They're the perfect product to help you kick back and chill the F out. They even added vitamins B12 and D3 to get that extra boost of vitamin goodness to give you the perfect blend to make you more tolerable to your coworkers and friends. Babe, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You vegan? No. Sunday Scaries even has vegan gummies called Vegan AF that are the guilt-free version of CBD you've been kindly hunting to help you forget about Becky Showboat IG account. <laughs> Don't get shook in 2021. Get 20% off at sundayscaries.com and use the promo code HEYBABE. 20% off at sundayscaries.com with promo code HEYBABE. It's 20% off at sundayscaries.com with the promo code HEYBABE. Thanks, Sunday Scaries, for making Sundays chill, chill again. again. Tell. I really, the last like couple of weeks, I've been really having like a rock hard penis mm. for most of the day. Interesting. Because, because I've been using Blue Chill. Mm. I've been using because I had those problems when I I couldn't get my penis up and nothing I do it just my dick would it just wouldn't go up. But now I've been going to bluechew.com and I put in the promo code Hey Babe mm. and I've been getting it for free. No, that's not nothing in this life is free. Well, you get five dollars off shipping. No, I that's think. not true at all. <laughs> you spend five dollars for shipping and you get it for free. You spend five dollars. I was setting you up to be like, no, there is things in life that you get for free, and then I thought you were going to hit them with the great deal that we have for them, but. We floundered, and we're not going to edit this out because we're men of the people. Because we're men of the people, and I'm proud to stand by my erection. And if you just go to bluechew.com, promo code Hey Babe, yes. Then what exactly you're going to you, you pay try it for shipping. free? You you get your first shipment free, and and then you just pay five beans for the shipping. That's, That's it. it. So you're paying for the shipping, you're getting the product for free. You can't beat that. That you can't beat. Think and about the, the the ads we do. 10% off, 20% off. No. This, that, the other. This no. is free. Free. Promo code Hey Babe. Pay $5 shipping. Bluetooth.com. That's it. I can't believe how how truly sick to my stomach. I really I do enjoy it. So I, went, I was in I was in a, I was on the road, right? And I ordered like a I had to use the per diem. And it was okay. like it was like 50 bucks or whatever it is. And I, I charged a bunch of dollars. I remember it came out to $77. So I went 27 bucks above the per diem. It was like a salad, a quesadilla, maybe like a piece of cheesecake, right. and like a pitcher of tea or something like right, that. Right, right, right. right. And I remember I was so dead tired and I, I ordered the food and I ordered on t I ordered a hot tub time machine on the, on <laughs> the, the, movie? Uh, on the movie. Yeah. I ordered a hot tub time machine. So the food comes and the way I eat food in a hotel is I'll push the little tray, like the little table, to the edge of the bed. 
Okay. So usually, hopefully, the heights align. And then if I need to, I'll open oh, wait, up. So you'll scoot all the way to the edge of the bed. I'll lay on my stomach. Right, so the TV's there, the bed is here, so I'll lay on my stomach. Feet up like a 16-year-old girl in the 70s. Like a 16-year-old girl in the 70s. Yeah. So I'm I'm (laughs) on my stomach, and I'm watching the television, and then I push the table right up to the edge of the bed. Smart. But sometimes there's a height differential, and I open up a nice big towel. Okay. I open it across the foot of the bed, and then I make like the towel is my tabletop, and then I take everything off the table, I arrange it across the bed. And I and I lay there and I eat in the bed. Now, I say it, and it also sounds terrible that I'm doing that. It sounds weird. Like I don't know. You're in a mattress. You're you're with your linens, and you're eating. Like I'm cutting a pork. You know. Right. So so it is weird. But there really is no other way to do it on the road. On the right in a hotel, I think the rules go out the window. Don't you think? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like you do anything, and I'll I'll eat I'll eat the food. Uh, you know, in the shower or something. Hundred percent. I do. I, yeah. I, I'll I I think yeah because. Because things in a hotel, they're your, you know, it feels like home, but it's not home. It's like you got the bed, the TV, the shower, but you know they're really not your things. They're not your things. So it's just like you kind of, like, you know, there's been times where, like, here's the thing. There's been times where I've been inadvertently so disgusting in a hotel Mm. that I think about now, like, what is, like, who are the people in this hotel? Because I saw once in the hotel, and I didn't know people did that. I didn't know that the housekeeping staff did this. And I... Granted, the hotel I was staying at wasn't very nice, but I saw them in the room next to me go in. I saw the guy come out. It was quick, and then they went in, and I, I went and got ice, and then I came back, and I pu- saw them put... There's no way they could have changed all the sheets. They just put the sheets back up and sprayed down the sheets with some kind of spray. That they is... did not change the sheets at all. Wow. So, that, like, do that you... That might be illegal. Uh, dude, well, I mean, that's what happens when you say it in a Ramada. Is it, was it a Ramada? Shout out Ramada. Shout out Ramada. Good company. If they want to sponsor the show. <laughs> I, uh, I, I remember I, I, I put everything to the edge of the bed, and then I, I swear to God, I woke up, and I must have laid everything out. I was dead tired. I ordered the movie, and I woke up. I don't know how long it was later, but it was more than two hours, because I woke up, and my I opened my eyes, and my face was on the quesadilla. The quesadilla, <laughs> I had not eaten the quesadilla yet. It was like a circle tortilla pillow. My face was laying in it, Yeah. because I put it right here, I guess, and I just kind of like dozed and hit it, and I woke up. Nothing was touched. I lifted my face off the quesadilla, and I looked at the screen and said, thank you for ordering hot tub time machine on the thing, <laughs> which, I those, which is kind of like... I, it's, it was like I time warped, <laughs> you know. Like I'm like I didn't watch that movie at all. But did it was you like, eat the quesadilla? Didn't. You didn't I went it. to bed. It was seventy seven dollars. I didn't touch anything. You didn't eat a single. Yeah. F- Have you ever eaten food off somebody else's plate? You ever done that? Like been drunk coming home from a hotel. Yeah. They got the food out, and let's say French fries are out because a lot of people don't eat all their French fries. You ever eaten a French fry off the plate, drunk? Yeah, you have, right? I, 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 I don't do it often. I, I only done it once, I think, and it wasn't a French fry. But speaking of quesadilla, I was with me and Q. We were in uh, New Orleans. It was a long time ago. Never been to New Orleans. Yeah. Never yeah. been to that city. Well, for some reason, it was hard to find food right. at like 2 in the morning. We were staying at like the Sheridan or something. There was no room service. There's no bodegas, and nothing was delivering. There was no food to be found. Right. And we were bombed, going back to our rooms, like, what are we going to do? And there was someone's room service tray out, and we lifted up the thing, and it was a quesadilla that two, two of the tr- triangles were eaten from it, okay. and the rest weren't. Wow, and I am a I am not one that really would ever do that. I'm a germ germ guy, right? And I, I was drunk, and I hate I hate I someone's I hate someone's discarded. Is case. that the same New Orleans trip where you had no voice and you had a show in front of packed people? Because no. I was thinking, if it was, I know the why you had no, no voice. No, no, that was no. This was all like ten years ago. That was like two, three years. Yeah, ago. He had a show once, pimp, where he had like sold out thousand people plus. He had no voice. He was talking like this. Oh, my like God. Like, he was talking yeah. like like he got the throat surgery. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, we had the cruise in New Orleans, and we docked there, and then I did a show at the Joy Theater. Yeah. It was actually me. I don't know if it was me, Nate, Bert. I think Cypher, because everybody was there. I think Cypher, I think Lewis. It was, it was all, I couldn't talk. Couldn't. I, 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 this, was the, this was the loudest I could talk. <laughs> and so I went out in the beginning, and I said, this is the loudest I could talk. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to do the show. And everyone's like, just do it. I'm like, you don't understand. This is going to get annoying. Yeah. And they were like, just do it. Go, you know, I'll go. Blah. So I, I went backstage in the show and I was like, all right, at the end of the show, if, I, if I'm, if i I'll see what happens. And I think I might have told you this, but 
I swear to God, I'm backstage. I don't know what to do. Actually, who it was? Everyone on the cruise came and hung out, and Yamanika was there. Giannis was actually Yamanika there. Yamanika Saunders. Yeah. So Yamanika felt so bad for me, and she made this concoction. I was drinking honey, tea, lozenges, and I was in the back just gargling, rubbing my throat, and right. everything, just hoping that something would come back within like 45 minutes where I can get up and do my set at the end. And God bless Yamanika. I don't know what she did. She she made some elixir. She made me drink drink it. And then she came in back. She she took me by the throat. And she was massaging my throat and like saying like prayers for me. Right. It was the coolest, funniest thing. I got to a place where I was able to talk like this, and I went out and I did I did thirty minutes talking like this. Jesus. Yeah, I have I actually have that set on on tape somewhere. I have it. It's an audio only, but I could probably play it and you could hear yeah, it. Yeah, and you could just hear I it. I can't. I felt so bad, but my whole family was there. And you know what? My family had never seen me perform before. Oh my but since God. they were on the cruise, yeah. they were like, oh, we'll come to the show. And it was the first time I extended family. My parents, sisters, cousins, aunts, my grandma, everything. Everybody and I was at like, the show. Hey, so you know, it's like, and I was talking like that. You were trying to, and you, and you just like had to do like your bits. I felt terrible, yeah. But you had to get it through. I yeah. know. Dude, that's literally... I once was performing in Houston, Texas, and they, I mean, I didn't have to say Texas. You know where Houston yeah. is. What am I? I'm not performing in I, Whitney, Houston. I was thinking that, about that when it's, you said it, but I just let it go. one of those things where it's like, yeah. you know, I'm performing in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Right. Yeah, you know. yeah. Um, so um, I'm doing the show, the first show. Then in between shows, we decide to, we had an hour to kill, decide to go to this burger place. I get a burger and a beer and truffle fries. Second show, Saturday night. I literally, dude, I literally, I'm like, feeling. I'm going to throw, like, uh. food poisoning. Like, throw up, like, people are coming up to me, and I'm just like, I can't, Shakes, like, shake chills. Yeah, Sergio Chacon, the great Sergio Chacon who's opening for me, is in the green room or in the back loading dock where I'm like, uh, please get me Pepto-Bismol, like, whatever. Like, I'm, I, oh. I'm literally throwing up. He's in the back with me, you know, trying to help me out while he's smoking a cigarette, blowing, he's like, he's like, yo, pop. It's going to pass, Bob. You only got 45 minutes, Bob. And he's like blowing cigarette smoke in my face. The great Sergio Chacon, shout him out. And, and I'm like, dude, this isn't helping. He goes, you can get through it, Bob. So I throw up all over, like yeah. all over. Oh. I had to go on stage in Houston with the garbage pail. Yeah. The adrenaline kicked in yeah. for the first 25 Thankfully. minutes. And I'm like, the, the, it, it, it went down. Yeah. 28, 29 minutes of the show, I threw up into the side of the bucket Came back, yep. kept doing the set. I got to 42, 43 minutes on the dot, got right off, threw up for the rest of the night, and then I, it was like legit food poisoning. Where, oh. And now to this, day, to this day, I do not eat any type of meat or drink beer or anything or eat heavy at all before a show. I won't do it. I'd rather throw up after the show. This, everything about eating before a show is bad. It's bad. Even if the, the worst thing that happens is you're tired or sluggish from right. it. Right. I hate eating before a show. I won't do it. But yeah, I've done uh, those shows where I've had to like just keep going to the side, throwing up and coming back on. Really? But yeah. Yeah, I did that a you few times. You say that casually like, a few times. Yeah. Did you go to the doctor for that? No, no, I mean like in different times, like not the same weekend. You no, know, but I'm saying like I've been doing comedy uh, 10 years. It's happened to me once. You, you've, you've It's happened to me twice. Okay. But I felt like, but where I actually threw up and threw up into a bucket and right during the show. There's been times where I threw up right before the show and right. then not again until after the show. But what what's the reason? Do you just have a sensitive stomach? Was it nerves? Or no, you I had a virus. I was sick. I was just pretty sick bad. Yeah, but yeah. no, yeah. But then, oh God, dude. And if you have to like, Hold it. If you're in the middle of a joke and you can't think of anything, but your entire body is shaking, trembling, cold sweats, and you're like trying to do this material, it's and you're worse. like, if I make one wrong move, I'm going to just, everything in my body is going to explode. Right. It's the, it's, the, it's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. And you can't shake it. Or if, you, and, or if it's like show one, and then it doesn't go away before show two. Yeah. I can't think of a situation that... Outside of like something ridiculous, like being on the front lines of a war or something, I in general real life, I can't think of a situation I I more not want to be in than that. It was so terrifying to like think about like fuck. I got to do forty five minutes to an hour. These people don't care that I'm sick. They paid. They're all looking up at me, burning they hot lights, yeah. sweating, and you feel like you're gonna throw up. Like you feel like so nauseous <laughs> yeah. that all you want to do is lay down with all the lights off, and you yes. have to now sixty minutes. Think about how long that is of performing, making things up as you go along, being in the moment, it's writing the jokes. Terrifying. 
Terrifying, terrifying, terrifying. When I was in third grade, Thomas Flespo was his name. He Flespo? Thomas Flespo. 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 F-L-E-S-B-O. F-L-E-S-P-O. Flespo. Throw bees at me, babe. Oh! <laughs> I'm throwing. I was throwing bees at you. It's throwing bees, bees, babe. It's bees, babe. Always has been. Always will be. Thomas Flespo. Flespo is. I've never heard that last name. Kid's a unique kid. Flespo. I'll tell you what. And you've probably never heard of what he's. You've probably never heard of anyone doing what he did. Okay. Thomas Flespo, is got a stomach virus in the back of class. Is embarrassed. Doesn't want to tell anybody that he's got a stomach virus. I guess feels like he's gonna hurl. I'm. You know, he's sitting in. You know, the middle row. I'm sitting in the row next to him. I'm looking up. You know, like at the teacher, Mrs. McNevin. Shout out. She was a nice lady. Shout out, um. She's doing, you know, a subject, you know, whatever she's doing. And I look over and he, op- my book bag was open with my books and he throws up into my book bag. Just Yours? Fully vomits into my book bag. Flespo. T- Flespo. Fully vomits into my book bag, then zips it back up. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. He, at the time, was doing karate. So, like, a little kid that does karate, like, beat the shit out of you. He says, don't tell anyone about this. Don't say a word about he used this. used his belt against he you? used his belt against me. So, now I have a, a book bag full of somebody else's vomit. We get out, you know. The nerve of Flespo. I swear to God, we get out. We we get out. You know, an hour later, I go home. My mother opens up my book bag. That's and, had. It's now. It's now marinating in vomit. Yeah. Well, she said, and again, because I didn't want to write out Flespo because he's, you know, first degree black belt in yeah. third grade. She goes, "Oh my God, honey, there's vomit all in your book bag." I was like, "I know. I threw up. I got sick." And she's like, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." And then she's like, "Oh my God. Oh my God." She goes, "Okay. Well, we're gonna stay home from school tomorrow." I was like, "Absolutely, we are." Whoa. So I got home from school, and then she wanted. She woke me up that morning and was like, "How are you feeling today? Do you still have stomach pains?" And I said, "Yeah, kind of." And then she went to the bathroom, and I went to my refrigerator and I got lemonade, which was in a pitcher because she always had this basin that people would throw up into. My mom had like a puke bucket. And once she was in the bathroom, well, you know, because she could hear me in earshot, I poured the lemonade into the bucket and went, <laughs> as if I was puking. And then I said that I was like, mom, this puke is really gross. I'm going to go flush it down the sink. And, <laughs> and then I poured the lemonade into the sink and got a full day off at school all because wow. of Flespo. Flespo. Tommy Flespo. Karate bully. Yeah, the I, Cobra Kai. I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Have you ever shit yourself on stage? I feel like you would. On No, I've never shit myself on stage, but what did happen was is I one time was performing, I want you to say in Pittsburgh, and some a guy threw short stained underwear at onto the stage. He throws them out. He, somebody said something, and then all of a sudden, a pair of fake un- or real, real, a pair of underwear comes. That's a crime. Come throwing onto the stage, and I'm like, did somebody throw their underwear? And there was a huge short stain. No, I swear to God. Oh, uh, I would hurl immediately. Yeah, and it got, it got. I would actually be very, very upset. No, I was one of those guys where like I got like a big laugh immediately, and I just like threw it to the back and just was like, so I was on the subway today. <laughs> oh my god! I just like went right more into more bits, but that's the only shit story. I, I've never, I've never shit on stage. I've had to, to be honest with you, performing live performing. What I've noticed is if I really have to go to the bathroom, number one or two or three, I just keep it in. If it's really urgent, I actually keep it in, and I don't do it until after my set because it keeps me in the moment. It keeps me very present with my material and the audience to know that I, I'm going to absolutely destroy a toilet <laughs> as soon as I put the mic back in the stand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh do you my do that goodness. too or you have to get it out? Well, I wouldn't leave stage, I don't think. Speaking of poop. Oh, yeah. I got a little surprise for you, baby. Wow. Bologna. Ugh. B-O-L-O-G-N-A. That's another thing that he hasn't had. What he is hasn't bologna? had bologna. What is bologna? Bologna, uh, I mean, I think bologna is um, a, a mixture of many different beefs and meats and parts of animals. I think. As long as it does this bologna. I, I talked about this before, but I think bologna has hoof, hoof, hooves in it. Hooves. <laughs> hooves? Like hooves. jello. Hooves. Hooves. Hoof, a hoof. Okay, does it have goat cheese in it? Is it it a hoof or a hoof? H-O-O-V-S. H-O-O-F is a hoof. A hoof. Hooves. Hooves. H-O-O-V-E-S. Hooves. Hooves or hooves? Behooves you. Behooves you. No, it's behoove. But I think think there might be like, you know, even like all different parts in here. But 
I Let's forgot do what I was going to tell you earlier, which was something else, and now I'm completely... Something about Flespo. What is bologna made of? It's a cooked smoked sausage made of cured beef, cured pork, or a mixture of the two. Bologna might include choice cuts depending on who's making it, but usually contains afterthoughts of the meat industry. <laughs> Organs, trimmings, and end pieces, and so on. So the bologna, bologna contains afterthoughts of the meat industry. <laughs> Organs, trimmings, which I don't like that. What is a trimming? Uh, what is this, a Christmas tree? Trimmings. And, and what was the other thing? Organs. And end pieces. So what is that? Have you ever had bologna? Oh, yeah. No, it sounds disgusting, but you'll eat this bologna and, you know, if you had it on cheese, uh, with cheese on a piece of bread. I can't eat cold cheese. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go, go, go. Take the whole thing. It's for you. God bless you. It's a quarter pound. Oh, even this is a perfect circle. Yeah, I don't think bologna's that bad. You got to keep an open mind. And usually you'd, again, usually you'd have, I wouldn't. S Not only is this my first piece of bologna, I'm being honest with you, Sal. I think this is my first cold cut in general, maybe since before 9-11. I don't think I've had a cold cut since 9-11. Are you serious? I swear you to God. You haven't eaten processed meats for 20 years? Not cold cuts. Wow. I don't think I've had a cold cut since pre-9-11. Why? So I feel like I'm letting the terrorists win when I do this. Really? Yeah. All right. I mean, it's, it, I, listen, no, bologna's not too bad, cheese. buddy. It's going to taste like a, somewhere in between a, a this and a that. Like a ham and a... And a it's, Bologna doesn't okay. smell terrific. It smells actually like my dad's cologne. <laughs> it smells like, I smell like a smoky vibe. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I don't know what trimmings and end pieces mean. My, I remember my a kid I went to school with, Richie, sixth grade, said, said he would always have bologna and ketchup sandwiches and they taste like hot dogs. Is that true? Okay, I could kind of, I could maybe kind of see that a little bit actually, because bologna it does taste like a hot dog. So that's what I was gonna say before. Remember when you threw up in school when you were younger, yeah. and all they did was come in and put wood chips on us. <laughs> yeah, like that was okay. That was, there wasn't like a disinfectant. No, there wasn't a, it wasn't like a mop. There no. wasn't even a mop involved. No, soap and water was not involved. The kid no. would throw up everywhere. No, it was this huge mound of throw up. They came and put sawdust on it. Sawdust. It let it soak into the sawdust, and he would come and brush it with a broom and a dust. Pan. Yeah, they would just throw it on there and say, listen, I know you just puked, but now this is a carpet shop. It was shop. like vomit chips. Yeah, that's the vomit chips. It, now we're at McSorley's Ale House in How New is York that City. okay? I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't know, but the rules were different pre-9-11. What do schools use to clean up vomit? Whereas the sawdust and cat litter will help to clump the vomit together and make it easier to remove from the surfaces while also offering some of sort of deodorization uh, of the odors emitted from these bodily fluids in the environment. By the way, is there a more disgusting word than clump? Clump. Oh, yeah. You have a clump on your neck. A, especially a, a, a sawdusty clump of vomit. I'm going to eat this clump of bologna. Yeah, now. yeah. I've never had bologna in my life, so it's a bunch of firsts today. First time pork chop, which I loved. First time goat cheese, which I hated. Sal, first time Cinnabon, which he loved. Now for the bologna, the finishing touch. Let's do Do I have to eat the whole thing or take a bite? What do you think? I would eat the whole thing. I was also going to say, but maybe I wouldn't be able to convince you to put... Goat cheese in the bologna. No, you already. Ha he already hates the goat cheese. Let's let, let's judge no, the it's bologna like it on its own. My stomach even think about yeah. it. Okay. No. Okay. Just keep an open mind. Grant, it's not supposed to be the best meat, but I don't think it's that gross. It's so too weird. I can't do it, Sal. Really, it's I that bad. That it is. You know, <laughs> just eating straight bologna, especially after you've had a pork chop and a cinnabon. Yeah, it's. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm getting a little nauseous now. I can't look at it. <laughs> you, you, you have to cover that up. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I can't continue to look at that baloney. I can't continue to look at the half-eaten baloney. Oh, this has been hey, babe. <laughs> oh man. I, 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 I. Okay, okay. I, I, no, no. I couldn't get it down. No, 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 no. I, I, I will, I will get, I will get close. I couldn't get. I was trying so hard, so I couldn't get it down. I'm being honest, man, that I, I may, like, I'm going to throw up on the Verrazano Bridge. Yeah. I hated the bologna. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, it's hard to shake the taste once you have it. All right, I got. I also have another podcast uh, called Christy Chaos. Uh, follow me there, uh, ChristyComedy.com. Uh, Christy Chaos comes out at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Um, and I got a lot of stand updates coming up, uh, so check me out. Okay, and then check out Taste Buds, our other podcast on the No Pressure Network. And then hit me up on my community app. My phone number is 718-260-6619. I text you guys back and whatnot. And, uh, oh, I'm on TikTok now. Woo! I haven't really been done anything yet, but I'm on it. Great. TikTok's awesome. Yeah, hit me up on TikTok. Is that what they do? TikTok. Hit Hit it it up. Hit Salad Babes up on TikTok. Hit me up. Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe.